the artwork I chose to do for my painting is the death of Socrates by Jacques Louis David. The death of Socrates is an oil on canvas painted in 1787 by Jacques Louis David. It has dimensions of four three four thirds times six fives six fifths. It's currently housed at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In the painting, The Death of Socrates, the painting focuses on the execution or trial of Socrates as told by Plato in his later work, The Plato. Socrates has been convicted of corrupting the youth of Athens and praying to strange gods. He was sentenced to die by drinking poison hemlock as administered by the government. He used his own death as the final lesson to his students, rather than fleeing when the opportunity arises, rather face it with rather face it calmly with grace. In Plato's Plato, it was noted by Plato that he had plenty of opportunities to flee. But Socrates chose to face his own faith. Born August 30th, 1784 in Paris, France, David was considered to be the preemptive painter of the era. The art of David embodies the style known as neoclassicalism, which he single-handedly brought to the forefront of the art world, which flourished in France during the late 18th and early 19th century. His style of vigorous contours, shaped forms, and polished surfaces boldly jumped from his paintings and caught the reader's eye. The death of Socrates was painted two years before the French Revolution. That speaks in contrast to Socrates' own time. And far-reaching to the birth of the what we know as United States and the new government or way of thinking. Coincidentally, in the unveiling of the death of Socrates, the founding father Thomas Jefferson was at the unveiling of the painting in 1785 in Paris. David already pretty much made the style of neoclassicalism popular three years earlier in his painting, The Oath of the Horatii. In direct contrast to the Rococo style of painting that was favored in the art world at the time. Now when I see the death of Socrates, the angles of the light that draws my eye to the center of the piece. The perfectly flat stone walls that V chose to paint the scene right before Socrates grabs the poison hemlock. As Socrates doesn't seem to care that he is reaching for his oncoming doom. Socrates is boldly pointing to the heavens as to accept his own faith. David chose to paint him very muscular or youthful for the real Socrates, who was said to be 70 years old at the time of his trial or execution. The light pours onto Socrates in an almost heavenly glow. The colors of the sides of the painting of the painting was washed out while the executioner wears red to Socrates heavenly pure white also what draws my eye is the curved form of the ones around Socrates as they weep weak, weakly in the corner to the erect form of the ones ruled by conviction in the middle of the painting while the action can be read side to side right to left 
for the people it seems weakly curling and twisted in pain. That leads to Socrates boldly, accept, boldly accepting his fate and the sitter to Plato's morning, his mentor, and answer his wife being led away for showing too much grief. Also, David puts his own twist in a painting by decreasing the number of people there from what was written to be over 15 to 12 surrounding Socrates as in the number of people besides Jesus in Da Vinci's Last Supper. Lastly, what catches my eye is the placement of Plato and his age in the artwork. He was said to be 29 at the time of Socrates' death, but he was very older and was said to not even be at the execution of Socrates. Also, the painting can be read left to right with the action almost bursting out of Plato's head, almost as if it was a dream. And wildly enough, Socrates is pointing to the sky, just as Plato was pointing to in the School of Athens by Raphael. Lastly, what I've chosen for my art story, when people first look at it, they just see a picture of an old car, an old rusted, beat-down car. But what I see is like a, the last of a dying breed, or possibly even a dead breed. Just like Socrates and his ideas. You know, it's like having the conviction to stand up for what you believe in and not bowing down and not running from your faith. That's pretty much what we're all given, you know, our own faith and things like that. And that's what I felt David was trying to point out in this painting. That even though Socrates was doomed to his fate, he didn't take it laying down. He took it boldly, he took it vigorously. And that's what this picture is to me. Like the people may see a rusted old beat up car, but I see a death of an era when things was made built to last. You know, this car is 30 years old, you know, the cars that we have nowadays. They really started breaking down in about like 10 years to expect to get 30 years, you know. That's why I say it's like pretty much the death of a dying breed. Back when we put pride in our products. Now everything is so monopolized to what is we build things to break pretty much instead of the last. Just capitalism is just like in hyperdrive. And that's why I appreciate the calls from yesteryear or yester generation like I may still enjoy and like the cars or ideas that's out now but it's not nothing like the old school and how things was once made built to be when there was pride put in behind things and that's why I feel like I get from Debbie's painting. You know. Just, you know, like a throwback. You know, just even though you may be condoned to your faith, just grabbing it vigorously and just not letting go, not bending to society's pressures and you know, conforming to the way of thinking, you know, just